Star Wars is known for its complex and imaginative world building, but we often learn more from its meticulous costumes and immersive production design than what is explained in the script. In George Lucas's initial trilogy of films, the world of a galaxy far, far away is gritty and weathered, showing the wear and tear of everyday life. What a piece of junk! Very different from the glossy futurism of early sci-fi hits like Star Trek or 2001. Impressive. This is because Star Wars is, and always has been, more fairy tale than science fiction. A struggle between good and evil, between light and dark, told with crystal clarity in its visual storytelling. <sighs> this is perhaps best seen in the saga's costume design, which George Lucas wanted to be familiar, yet not. Distinctive, yet inconspicuous. In Star Wars, villains are shrouded in darkness and flames, heralding destruction. Inspired by brutalist architecture and fascist uniforms, the Empire and the First Order have a chilly, militaristic look with no sense of individuality. The Stormtroopers are faceless, robotic and perfectly symmetrical, aside from the odd detail of a single knee pad each, allowing them to kneel down and shoot their rifles in formation. Meanwhile, our heroes are closer to the natural world, living in swamps and forests, and discovering the Force by connecting with nature. They often wear natural colours and soft fabrics. Unlike the harsh uniformity of the Empire, they display a wide range of personal tastes. Yahoo! Dashing rogue Han Solo's getup is a mishmash of costume pieces you'd expect to find in spaghetti westerns, from his low-slung gun holster to the long duster coat he wears in Return of the Jedi. And who might you be? Han's old smuggling pal Lando, on the other hand, has an undeniable fondness for capes. When we first meet him, his ostentatious blue cape hints at his wealth and flair for fashion, an image-conscious figure compared to the scruffy Han Solo. Queen Amidala's elaborate wardrobe was inspired by traditional Mongolian gowns, Chinese imperial robes, and a headdress worn by a 19th century Russian aristocrat. Her hairstyles may call back to her daughter, Princess Leia, but unlike the simpler costumes of the original trilogy, Amidala's luxury clothing suggests a life of privilege. By comparison, Leia favours practicality over glamour. Never shy about making its subtext clear, Star Wars features villains who look like demons, robotic skeletons and decaying corpses. But by far the most iconic is Darth Vader. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Designed by concept artist Ralph McQuarrie and costume designer John Molo, Darth Vader is enigmatic and menacing. Hiding gruesome injuries and keeping him alive with a respirator, Vader's armor disguises his human frailty while projecting an intimidating, inhuman exterior. Like several other characters in the franchise, Vader plays into some problematic tropes, linking disfigurement with darkness. As George Lucas explored Vader's backstory in the Star Wars prequels, costuming played a key role. Anakin Skywalker began as an innocent child, wearing a sand-coloured tunic like Luke. After he becomes a Jedi Knight, Anakin enters his angry goth phase. His dark brown robes are the darkest of all the Jedi, with black leather tabs that suggest his inevitable slide towards the dark side. You underestimate my power! By episode three, he is scarred and disfigured. Ah! Anakin's final transformation sees a team of sinister droids cover his injured body with Vader's armor, an outfit that becomes a living prison. In these scenes, we witness the death of Anakin Skywalker and the birth of Darth Vader an iconic screen villain whose legacy defines the Star Wars saga. We're not done yet. Even for the next generation, when it comes to embodying evil, the Darth Vader look is still in vogue. <laughs>